Hey guys, I'm Styler and in this video I'm going to review the Yumi Hammer S which is the successor to the Yumi Hammer released 6 months ago. So when we look at the Yumi Hammer S it doesn't look anything near the old hammer and the design and phone size has changed a lot together with the hardware. So some of the new highlights are a rear fingerprint scanner, full metal frame, Android 5.1 out of the box, 2.5D curved glass, Sony camera sensor and last but not least the new USB Type-C. So if you want to see the accessories, wall charger etc included the Yumi Hammer S, please go to my channel and search for my Yumi Hammer S first look video where I do a complete unboxing. Or you can check the video description, I will provide a direct link below. Let's now have a look at the phone design. On the top we find the light and proximity sensor, the ear speaker together with the 2 megapixel Omnivision 9760 front camera. The phone has a 5.5 inch IPS HD display which is very sharp, bright and vivid. In the bottom we find the menu, home and back buttons which don't have any kind of backlight. On the back side which is removable and made of matte plastic, we have a 30 megapixel Sony rear camera together with a dual LED flash and a fingerprint scanner. Inside the phone we will also find a 3200mAh battery. In the bottom of the phone we find the USB Type-C port, built-in speaker and the microphone. On the right side we find the volume rocker together with the power button. In the top we find the 3.5mm headphone jack and the IR sensor. And last on the left side we have nothing, only the very nice metal frame. So let's open up the back. And let's have a look at the trays. Let's have a look at the phone. So first of all, let me show you that it support double tap to wake. And uh, it also support off screen gestures. Let's try M for music player. You see the player here. Yeah, and uh, this is the UI, the stock lounger on the phone, and uh, it looks like on other Yumi phones, the same kind of icons we also saw on, for example, the Yumi Ion. And let me just try to scroll a little bit here. And um, I installed some additional test apps, let's see in the app drawer. And you also notice that it's pre-rooted. But sadly it does not have any kind of notification LED and uh, the touch buttons also have no kind of backlight. Let's see here in the top and let me show you the quick toggles. So we have support for hot knot. You see we have a special clean button to clean up the memory. We see the small animation for the auto rotation. So this is Android 5.1. And let me also demonstrate the fingerprint scanner on the rear. Let's go into the settings and let me scroll down into the fingerprint. So here I've just set a code. And I learned my finger here different times to be sure. If you learn it more times, it will be more accurate. And it's also possible to use it for the app lock. So you can lock different apps. For example, contacts, messages, settings, browser and so on, if you want to lock some apps for privacy. And let me try it out. Let's lock. And uh, let me try here with this finger here. So first of all, I will double tap to wake. Then I will use the finger and you can see it unlocks instantly. So this works really great. Let me try with another finger. So here I will use this finger. And this is not accepted at all. Doesn't unlock. Let me try with the correct finger again. You see, it's unlocked. So this is working really great and the fingerprint reader on the back is really fast. I just suggest to uh, learn the finger several times because then it's more accurate and um, then it works really really great. 
Now let me show you the viewing angles. Yeah, from the side. And from the top. Let's test out the torch. So it's dual LED. But as you notice, we have a black spot here in the sensor. So uh, the LEDs are not that strong. Um, for a dual LED, I would expect it to be much, much stronger. So yeah, I would say the LEDs are below average. So regarding the glass, it is using what they call 2.5D arc screen. So it's uh, curved here in the edge. A little bit hard to show here in a video, but I believe that you can see it. And the glass seems to be pretty scratch resistant. I'm not sure if it's Gorilla Glass or Dragon Trail Glass, but uh, so far I haven't got any scratches on the display, so the quality seems to be good. So regarding the connectivity, let's have a look. On the Wi-Fi, we see I'm using dual SIM. So the phone, of course, support 2G, 3G, and also 4G. But right now I'm using just 3G on my phone. And uh, on my Hammer S here, I didn't experience any kind of Wi-Fi disconnects, but it seems that some users have experienced that, as some mentioned it online. But for me personally, I haven't had any problems. And you also see that it's stable, always connected. And the range and speed so far has been excellent and fine. Also notice that the network reception is really good on both SIM cards. Let's try out a test call. Proximity sensor. And let's try out the speaker. You have one new messages, one saved messages to listen to today. And let me try out the ear speakers, the volume and quality. Saved messages, press 3. To listen to all the messages, press 4. Okay, so you could hear the sound from the ear speaker was fine and good. Let's try to disconnect the Wi Fi. So I will go only on the mobile network with 3G. Let's try to open up the browser. Let's load. Okay, so we see that here. Let's try another side. Let's try eBay. So right now it's just using the mobile data, no kind of VLAN or Wi-Fi. Seems to be fine. And now let's have a look inside the camera app. And you can see that the autofocus is working. Let's see inside the settings. And we have up to 13 megapixels, 4 to 3. Let's try full screen, 9.5 it says. We have support for face beauty. Here for the video camera, the quality up to fine. And let me show you some samples. Let's try to show some pictures. Let's see. So I would say overall the quality of the camera is average. Not the best I have seen, but uh, for normal shots it's okay. The details are there and the pictures are okay sharp as you can see. But I have taken some samples using the rear camera sensor in order to show you how the device performs. Take a look at these samples and be the judge yourself because it is always in the eye of the beholder. The link to the samples can be found in the video description. And uh, regarding using earphones with this phone, 
The sound is clear and loud, so there are no issues with that at all. And next up, let me show you the settings. So here inside SIM cards, you can set up both trays, both SIM cards to be for the mobile data. Of course, you can't use uh, both at the same time. You have to choose SIM 1 or 2. Let's scroll down. We have display. So here we have support for MiraVision. Let's see the storage. So here we have one partition with 12.11 GB total space available, 10.73 GB right now. And it also seems to support external USB storage, USB on the go. Let's see the RAM consumption. And we see right now 1.6 GB of RAM, so that's really, really good. System only 97 megabyte. That's really good. Yeah, when switching to cached. So the phone totally has two gigabyte of RAM. Let's scroll further down and we have smart wake, double tap to wake and the off screen gestures, draw a C to start the camera, M for music and so on. We have the fingerprint settings, I showed these before when I tested the fingerprint. And then we also have language and input. So the phone is multi-language. And last we find about phone. See my build number, Android version 5.1 model number. And it also has support for wireless update. So that's it for the settings. In the rest of the video I will show you some results from different test apps and in the end I will run a game and tell you about the pros and cons, so stay tuned if you want to know more.
Now to my pros and cons. So first to the pros. It has a very good price and nice design. It comes with USB type C with a reversible connector and uh, that is very convenient. It has a built in IR blaster that works without any issues. It has good Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS and network connection. While I tested it I did not experience any problems or disconnects with the Wi-Fi. It also has very good battery life and on screen time. Please check the Geekbench 3 battery test in the video description. It has LTE Band 20 support, that's really nice. The phone came pre-rooted, so you don't have to think about rooting it yourself. And last, it has acceptable sound quality from the built-in speaker. So to the cons, there's no notification LED and no backlight in the touch buttons. It only comes with the SoC MTK6735P clocked at 1.0 GHz so not really recommended for games. It runs only in 32-bit mode, no 64-bit, and that has something to do with the used SoC. It only has three built-in sensors, there's no gyroscope or e-compass. It is extremely heavy, 200 gram, and not everyone, including myself, really like a phone that heavy. The dual LEDs on the back are not that strong. I have seen much stronger LEDs on other phones. So the question, should you get the Yumi Hammer S? Overall, the Yumi Hammer S is a decent budget phone with pros and cons that you would need to consider first. For the price, it offers some good features like the fingerprint scanner, but if you can live with the cons, it's something you really have to decide for yourself. Well guys, that's it for the review. Remember also to check out my blog. You'll find the link in the video description. If you have any questions, please comment below, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.